Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The National Council of Provinces voted to pass the Electricity Regulation Amendment Bill this week. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the significance of this development. Hi Terence. What is the background to this bill and why is it significant? Well, the long background to this bill is it goes back to the 1998 White Paper, which said we were going to have a industry that uh, was an unbundled industry of generation, transmission and distribution. And there was going to be then some form of competition, especially at the tri uh, generation level, but potentially also at distribution, which is dominated by Eskom and municipalities. So that's the long background, but in the more immediate past, it's really been the intensification of load shedding and efforts around that to get a more sustainable electricity supply industry into the future. A very big collaboration in more recent times between government and business. And uh, this is one of the, this is a major reform, you know, of the industry. Putting in place, you know, well, the vision of that 1998 white paper, actually putting in place the, the legislative framework for that. Um, and uh, that is what has basically been happening over the last a uh, few years, but actually really an acceleration from the second half really of 2023, where this bill was then eventually, after a long delay, was eventually put before parliamentarians. There was a public hearing process. There were national, a national road shows to consult in the provinces. Um, and uh, remarkably, the National Assembly got this through earlier this year. And now the last parliamentary step was the NCOP, which met yesterday and deliberated on this and approved this bill after their own deliberation process. And uh, this was a voting that happened yesterday and overwhelmingly supported within in the NCOP. Only one province, the Western Cape, which we know is DA dominated, they felt that there's some constitutional problems in the sense that when you need to consult, you need to have time to consult with your, your provincial residents and they didn't feel uh, that sh that there was sufficient time. It, it was a, a very tr uh, a very sh uh, shortened process, accelerated process, amazing for, amazingly for South Africa. And basically, what we have now is uh, a, a legislation that can ascend to the union buildings for the president's uh, signature. What happens now, and can we expect any opposition, such as we've seen with the NHI Act? Well, as I said, it now can ascend to the president for. Uh, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa's signature and I don't think we're going to see the opposition that we saw around the NHR uh, now act. You know, uh, this has been uh, uh, widely, you know, supported within the business community saying, look, the electricity supply industry as it's structured is not only outside the policy that we, we sort of set out early into our democracy, but it uh, is really no longer fit for purpose. We need a, um, a level playing field for the new generators that are coming in to compete with Eskom. And these, are, these have come f in the form of you know, public procurement rounds and more recently through, um, through these private PPAs that are starting to arise around the country. But it's not necessarily a level playing field. It's, you know, you still, it's all really centered around the vertically integrated monopoly. The single buyer of public procured power is still Eskom. We, ne we need to transition to a market, sort of uh, a multi-market type architecture. So, and business says that there are a number of benefits of, uh, in that one major one being, you know, the fact that we've had our eggs all in one basket, the Eskom, the vertically integrated utility, and that has been failing the country. We've seen that visibly through load shedding. So having more participants in the industry hopefully will de-risk the industry. There's a natural monopoly element to the business and that's the wires business, which is in the center and the transmission system operator. And we're going to add a, a market operator to that function. So that will be in the, the National Transmission Company South Africa, which we now know has its own board and should be operationalized around July this year depending on whether they can get all the last boxes ticked in terms of the Companies Act. There's a long process that has un been undertaken within Eskom to separate uh, the transmission business. And then obviously uh, attention will fall 
uh, more and more to the distribution side where Eskim is a major player, but where there's a lot of failure in the system, particularly at the, at in certain municipal uh, jurisdictions, some uh, households are just unable to access power that they used to access, and now for months on end. Uh, so there has to be much more attention on that level. But this is the legal framework, overarching legal framework, and business is going to support it, uh, unlike what we're going to see major resistance to the NHI Act. Once it is law, what further action should we expect? Yeah, well, I think we're really now only at the end of the beginning <laughs> in reforming this electricity supply industry and making it fit for purpose in a world where the technologies are changing massively. You know, we were a heavily, the vertically integrated model was perfect for large coal-fired power stations, large transmission grids, and a large consumer base, a minerals and energy complex the mines, the smelters, the refiners that needed this power. And so this, it was all very suited towards that world. It's that world is changing rapidly uh, with technologies on the generation side that are much more, much more scalable, smaller, uh, are much easier to distribute around the country and don't have to be around a, a single uh, resource like coal. So we are going to be already seeing that 5,000 megawatts of solar on rooftops, on company and household rooftops already, and that's going to grow in a country uh, blessed with such good uh, solar resource. So th that has to be managed, and it, uh, managing it through a vertically in, uh, integrated monopoly structure is not the way to go, and we, it's, it creates, it's going to create new risks in the system. We have to have a, a much more agile and nimble uh, uh, way of uh, approaching that, both at the the, the transmission system operator and market operator level, which is what we're going to see inside the NTCSA, at least initially, and at the distribution end. And this, uh, so, so we're now going to see a lot of work, deep work, around getting the regulations right, uh, about getting the market codes right, so that we, ca that we can de-risk this, because this is a major, it's a once in a, a sort of generation change, you know, this is a, um, uh, a, a change that we haven't seen, you know, Eskim is uh, over 100 years old, built on that vertically integrated model. This is a major change from that 100 year model that's been in place. So there are going to be risks and we're going to have to manage these as we go. And it's going to require a lot of diligence, a lot of consultation and learning by doing and being willing to change. This can't be the end state. I think we're going to have to see further amendments to the, the regulatory uh, legislation and probably further uh, amendments, well definitely to regulation, to possibly other legislation as we go. So we're really at the end of the beginning, but we are, I think directionally, you know, we're aligning ourselves to a, a new, the new world of electricity supply industry. We hopefully going to have a competitive market in generation that ultimately makes electricity, you know, we've had artificially low tariffs, which have spiked, you know, uh, over the last t uh, 10 years and a bit and now maybe getting, or getting to the point of unaffordability, but hopefully you know, these new technologies will at least cap that steep rise that we've been seeing if we're not going to see a, a decrease in prices. I don't think uh, we should see this as a definite signal that we're going to see a decrease in prices. I think there's a lot of you know, costs in the systems that are not properly visible, and as those become visible, the regulator is going to have to make consumers or the government, the taxpayer, pay for those. And there are going to have to be discussions about, for instance, how indigent households receive their, their um, electricity, how that gets paid for, for instance, because it is, we're in a, in a world of high electricity prices, and I don't think those are going away. But at least we now have the legislative architecture to allow us to attack this new world with vigor and with open eyes. And I think that's what the next few years are going to be about, setting in place the regulations, the market codes, to allow us to navigate this new world. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.